Every little thing is gonna be alright. Two, three! Hey, what's poppin', friends? What's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. Genuinely, wholeheartedly, authentically. Do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. Oh, the daily series here on the channel where I reflect what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it for whatever that's worth, and more importantly, asking for yours. Big Italian transfer guru Fabrizio Romano is giving us intel today. He's citing Pochettino's comments post-win yesterday, Enzo Fernandez, Conor Gallagher, Bayern Munich wanted Mikhailo Mudrik in January. We can talk about him a little bit as well. I have, of course, done my complete breakdown video on Chelsea's win yesterday evening in the Premier League away at Crystal Palace, making it 13 wins on the bounce, which is incredible scenes, really. Uh, a terrible, turgid, ponderous, concerning, worrying first half performance, and then turned around at the end, passing a test of sorts, and another away win on the road. Good progress of sorts, but still, I really dissect that game and get into it, so do consider watching the previous upload for some intel on Chelsea's win away at Crystal Palace. Of course, a brace for Conor Gallagher. His first two Premier League goals this season and Enzo Fernandez dunking at the end and then coming out with some comments, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Strap yourselves in, you little lengtings. I will stop soon. I just find it funny. Uh, yeah, we're nearing 180k. You guys can be the difference or you there, you mate listening to me now, you can be the difference maker to uh, get me over that landmark. So please do consider subscribing if you're yet to do so. Just tap the button, sub, hit the bell if you want to. Thank you for liking the video and let's get into it. Let's start off with the Chelsea manager, Maurizio Pochettino, for Maurizio Romano citing what he said on Sky Sports. I don't care about the rumors. I don't care about the tension. I don't care about the pressure. I don't care about the stresses. It sounds like a song lyric. I don't care about the rumors. I don't care about the tension. I don't care about the pressure. Just give me Chelsea wins. Maybe a country song. We know really well the reality and we are going to keep working. Yeah, another piece of evidence that perhaps behind the scenes, there isn't any pressure on the Chelsea manager, Maurizio Pochettino. He said he got recent texts from the owners saying, we're in this together, we're going to get through. It does seem like the players are playing for him. Certainly, we had a great example of that away at Aston Villa to get through in the replay in the FA Cup. And although the first half was ponderous and bad, they did rally in the second half. I still have huge reservations systemically. A lot of the time, it's vibes when we make the correct combinations in the final third to score goals and move forwards and wins games but we'll see out the season with the manager we'll see how we get on and we can assess again in the summer who's developed who's regressed do we have uh, a pattern of play um you know are we settling into the ideology of pochettino now some you know injured players are back is Nkunku finding form at the end of the season is chuck Wameka featuring is cassidy helping off the bench lots of stuff to consider there you know it does seem like pochettino is safe for the moment and his words there essentially indicate yeah like you know we there is all this noise there's all this pressure but it doesn't affect us we know, I know as an employee, what my employers want, what they expect, they've assessed the situation, they know internally behind the scenes, you know, the ramifications of everything we're doing, what we've had to endure, all that kind of stuff, man. Perhaps stuff we aren't privy to uh, from outside the club. And rightly, Chelsea fans are frustrated with the season. But, you know, a few more wins in the Prem, um, maybe a bit deeper in the FA Cup and see what happens in the League Cup, and a few more settled performers on the pitch with these young players, and maybe buy a big striker in the summer, then fortunes can change rather quickly indeed. Let me know what you think of the whole Pochettino situation and the plan. Um, I can't imagine you're happy about everything, even though it was a great result yesterday. And look, coming back to win from behind, away from home. Granted, we always beat Palace, but still, you know, eventually, statistics will dictate, eventually, we'll stop winning against Crystal Palace. You know, they beat, like, Man City every now and again. Do you know what I mean? They pick up points against big teams. We beat them 13 times in a row. 
that eventually that will end, and you thought maybe it could be this season when we're sort of out of sorts. But no, we won. Uh, late winners as well, so it's a good feeling. It's not a proper strong representation of how we approached the game, but it showed a bit of heart and, uh, you know, a bit of Bob Marley on at the end. Seems like a bit of an anthem for Chelsea now. Hopefully they can see us through to the end of the season for the away fans and indeed the home support. So yeah, let me know what you think about the whole Pochettino situation. His words about not caring about the external pressure and noise. Comment down below, friends, and let's move on. Now we're going to use Romano's tweets to look at some Enzo Fernandez quotes. Firstly, Enzo says this, I'm happy here at Chelsea. We want to play the next Champions League. Uh, interesting, I guess he means win a Champions League here at Chelsea? I'm not sure. I don't know where the leaving rumours came from. They had been spoken about on social networks. I came out to totally deny that story. It's fake, he told ESPN. Enzo goes on to say, I don't want to leave Chelsea. I'm very good here with my teammates and coaching staff. From the first day I arrived, the people at the club are treating me very well. I'm grateful for that. I will continue here until they want me to. Yeah, pretty comprehensive from the Argentine World Cup winner or Argentinian World Cup winner. He was very frustrating in that first half yesterday against Palace and you could tell he was frustrated with himself. But then again, one has to remind oneself that he is a young player. Not only is he a young player, and I always use this excuse, guys, and you might get a bit nauseous hearing me say it, but it's true, guys. He's playing in a dysfunctional Chelsea side. He's not been slam dunked into a well-oiled Pep Guardiola's Man City. He's playing in this Chelsea side. And prior to his transfer to Chelsea, which at the time was a record transfer, he, um... You know, he had, didn't have a break from the South American football moving over to Portugal, to going to Qatar, to coming to Chelsea, and just playing every single game. And that's got burnout written all over it, and you want to be very careful with young players. He's been very good to keep playing, but we need to manage him well. And the rumours came out, the agent, his agent originally denied him, but now he's come out and said himself, look, this is all absolute nonsense. I'm staying at Chelsea, can you all stop now? And I'm happy here. As long as they want me, I'll stay. It is interesting to say, as as long as they'll want me. I don't think we're going to want to sell him. But there is, interestingly, an idea that if a time comes where Chelsea feel like they can sell Caicedo and Enzo for double the money they bought him for because the market goes that way, that they will consider it because they're both on such long deals. They might think, okay, in five years' time, say, when they have both of three years left on their deals, which, you know, modern-day football, if you've got three years left on your deal, you can go for a lot of money. If Hazard can go for a total of €160 million, Euros, after all the uh, add-ons were included. He had 12 months left on this deal. Of course, Hazard was a Galactico when he left Chelsea. He, ironically, he was no longer a Galactico when he went to Real Madrid. But there is an idea there that, you know, you can have five great years of these players and if you've got new youngsters coming through that can play that role and you need to generate some revenue, then you can sell them because the inflation goes that way and whatever. That's a kind of another story, but it's interesting that there are reports from The Athletic that Chelsea believe that that despite breaking the transfer record for both these players, they actually have resale value. That's what they believe. Anyway, speculative kind of at the moment, but it's good, man. Enzo Fernandez can play brilliantly. He frustrated me so much in that first half, but then again, he played a lot better in the second, and of course, scored the goal that clinched the win as well, which is really important. I think he's on like six or seven goals now, um, which is great for him for number eight, you know? And I said, I said in my complete breakdown yesterday, for a double pivot player to score, you know, double figures, maybe. Superb, superb. Anyway, let me know what you think about Enzo Benandes down in the comments section below. Let's move on to the next Fabrizio Romano train tweet news hour. God, Romano loves Chelsea. Now he's speaking about Conor Gallagher citing a Pochettino quote, which says this. Gallagher told me he wants to stay at Chelsea. Other than that, it's for him and the club to discuss. We like him, I'm so happy for him and so happy for the team because it's a victory we needed. Then about his contract, it's up to Connor and the club. This interesting conversation has reared its ugly head again. Now this is, this is not as clear cut as everyone thinks it is, right? Firstly, Connor has done nothing wrong. He works incredibly hard. I believe he ran 13 kilometers in a Premier League game yesterday. And despite having the ball a lot, that's an insane uh, record. He was cramping up and he still scored the, um, you know, the equaliser and the winner. 
So incredible performance from Conor Gallagher. He loves Chelsea. He tries hard. He's professional. He's never injured. What an incredible asset to have. There is a school of thought. Now, disclaimer, caveat, I'm not sure I believe this. But I've heard people who speak about football, uh, that I respect their opinions, that when you have a really good individual performer like that, if it's something like an Eden Hazard, then you just put them in. But when it's like a Conor Gallagher that's really, really good individually, it can help you. But it may... I... The question is, would Pep Guardiola want Conor Gallagher as this systemic player? Is he technical enough to play the Bernardo Silva, the Phil Foden kind of floating midfielders? Do you know what I mean? Because he's not going to be like a Rodri. He would be like a Bernardo Silva style player. Now, Mateo Kovacic, very technically gifted. He sort of is a bench player for City, a useful bench player. And you wonder, like, is that kind of tenacious pressing, counter-pressing player what a Guardiola would want, you know? Ultimately, what it boils down to is you're probably thinking, Jan, do you want to keep Conor Gallagher? And yes, I do, wholeheartedly. My long-term concerns would be, would he be a starting midfielder in what is a triumphant Premier League winning system and tactics? Maybe. I'm re- I know, I, know like, I get so much heat for sitting on the fence, but I'm un- until I'm sure about something... I don't want to like come out with a sensational opinion. I just want to like play devil's advocate because he's such a um, you know good pressing counter pressing. But when you really want to stranglehold a game and have a passing system, you have got to have these like um, kind of like more Cole Palmery midfielders and Phil Foden's. Do you know what I mean? Rather than uh, and, and Bernardo Silva's really rather than uh, a Conor Gallagher. I do think Conor Gallagher might suit. I do think he would suit a Tottenham. But I don't think Tottenham are a Premier League challenging level. Look, and again, I'm not condemning Conor Gallagher to anything. He's been our joint best player this season. He loves Chelsea. That's at a premium at the moment because we've cleared the deck. So we've got to keep him for that. The only issue is, can we reach an agreement? Can the club say, right, it's worth giving him this money for this amount of time? Yeah, you'd think at this point, because of Pochettino, they would have to just find an agreement. Look at the, what he did yesterday. If he has more of those... There were his first two Premier League goals, which might have been a bit of concern for all the sporting directors, the hierarchy, but he scored three goals in the space of a week now in two games. If he pops off and scores a few more goals, they got no excuses. The Chelsea hierarchy, they can, you know, their concerns, the cons, and the shall we give him this amount of money in the contract, they can rule that out, you know, goal scoring form. If he finds it again um, and just proves, yeah, I can pop goals in the Pochettino system, in the way we play, I can score goals for him. Right, let's give him a contract. Um, Yeah, that's what I think. Let me know what you think about Connor. Tough one, interesting one. Comment down below. Let's move on to another player. Bayern Munich considered a late January move for Mikhailo Mudrik on loan from Chelsea, but it was not a concrete negotiation. No chance, as Chelsea didn't want Mudrik to leave, and so Bayern had to focus on bringing Brian Saragoza to the club. This is super interesting that um, clubs are approaching Chelsea for Mudrik. I understand how Chelsea wouldn't want to loan him. The thing is, right, it's a tough one. This is another super tough one, right? Because the left wing position, what have we got right now, as of right now? Well, we've got Nicholas Jackson, who that's his native position, and granted he wasn't great yesterday, has proven he can play very well there on a couple of occasions. You've got Raheem Sterling, who's divisive, but no one's taking him on loan at the moment because of his massive wages and I don't think he wants to leave London but you know he's trying and he's going to be professional and I think he deserves like you know he'll never throw his toys out the pram Sterling he'll always be professional which is a big plus a credit to him um so you know the ownership will be like well if you can use Sterling at the moment then do um and then Nkunku of course can play on the middle but he's played a lot in that left channel and on the left wing as this right footing right footed attacker and then maybe you've got Mudrik do you know what I mean so like uh Mudrik was bought to be the long-term solution for Chelsea's left wing. So, you know, they would have known they've had Sterling. How long is he going to last? If he does well, he starts. You know, maybe you can convince him to go to Saudi at some point or whatever. You know, maybe after next season, maybe in the summer. We'll have to see. Uh, Although I don't think he personally would want to go, which we've spoken about. We won't get into it now. But Mudrik, Mudrik is the long-term plan. We've seen how transitional... Attackers can absolutely tear up the Premier League. You know, your human sons on that side. And of course, Pochettino uh, sort of made Son an absolute superstar. They'll look at Mudrik and be like, yeah, he can do that. You know, he can do be that kind of profile. And I've said it before, he's fast in transition. He's a good dribbler and he's got an absolute hammer of a finish. Bang, bang, bang. The free raw materials for super radically uh, effective 
um, transitional winger. But severely undercoached, sometimes uh, maybe gets inside his own head and uh, has put in some really bad performances that I've not personally dug him out for because I see the reasons for it, you know, and you know, lest we forget what's going on in his home country and all that kind of stuff. So I think Chelsea didn't want to just, you know, send him out on loan. They want to keep him close and try and sort of nurture him a little bit. But it's interesting that that's already been spoken about a year into being at Chelsea. Maybe it would have done him good. You know, that we all know the Bundesliga is great for transitional wingers. You know, just ask uh, Timo Werner originally from when he came from Leipzig. It might have been good, but it also would have been a bad look. The optics wouldn't have been great for Chelsea. Uh, I know he's not 88 million, he's 62 million. It can go up to 88 if we win the Premier League and Champions League. But it's still a 62 million pound winger that you've had for a year and you're already loaning. It's not a good look. So it's tough, but it's interesting as well. I'm very keen to learn your thoughts on the Mudrick situation right now. Have a think about it, and then comment, and I'll be interested in reading the comments. Because we've got a great community here on Football Therapy, and I'd urge you to become a part of it by visit coming back, visiting, subscribing if you want to. And thank you for liking, but I do love reading your comments. And uh, yeah, if you want more interaction with me, follow me on Instagram, at FootballYannick. Alright, take care of yourselves. Peace.